Good afternoon, St. Luke. It's good to see you today. Let me ask you a question. How long are you comfortable with silence? Even that was just really difficult for me. <laughs> Staying quiet that long, uh, not saying anything at all. Some of us are extroverts who get our energy from being around people, from interacting, being in conversations. Others regenerate our energy by alone time, by a favorite activity, by having a one-on-one -on -one interaction, maybe. Where does your mind go in a moment of silence? How difficult is it for you to control your thoughts and to really slow things down? You know, when I was a kid in public middle school and high school, the day would always start the same way. You would get into your class, you would hear the first bell ring, go to your homeroom class, and then the bell would ring again to start the day. You hear the morning announcements, and at the end of them, there was a moment of silence. Whether you put your head down, whether you closed your eyes, whether you kept them open. Moment of silence. I didn't quite know what to do with it then. But then it would conclude and you'd start the Pledge of Allegiance and go about your day. As I've grown into an adult, we have moments of silence in lots of different places. Maybe it's at a Penguins game. Maybe it's even at the theater before uh, an event or a show that happens. It's happened to me when we lived in St. Louis. Crystal and I's favorite outdoor theater to go to was a, a civic theater, and so there'd be a moment of silence before the show and then the Pledge of Allegiance. You know, today, May 27th, you may have seen on social media or online that folks were encouraging others to take a moment of silence, to remember those who have passed during this pandemic from COVID-19. Now, we might have different opinions of how many people have actually passed, and the numbers may be fuzzy, but that's really not the point. The point is, what's a Christian supposed to do during a moment of silence? Do we just clear our mind? Certainly it's a moment to remember and show respect to people. But let me share a piece of scripture with you that I think is even more important for us today to remember as we grieve those that we've lost, as we remember the loss of life, as we show respect to those in the healthcare industry who put their lives on the line in service to others. Listen to these words from Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 14. Since then, we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who's unable to sympathize with us in our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. There are so many helpful pieces in this scripture to remind us during times of difficulty, during moments of grief, of loss, as we remember such tragic events happening around us, as we remember the bravery of frontline workers, Christians can do something even more powerful than just being quiet for a number of seconds. We're told that Jesus understands what it's like to be in a difficult moment, that Jesus has been through this in every much the same way that we have been, and yet he's done so without sin. And we're invited in verse 16 to draw near to the throne of grace with confidence. Well, how do we do that? In lots of ways, in reading scripture, but most importantly today, I want to remind you, as we're out and about in the world, as we engage in our civic life together, our private lives together, Christians can do a little bit more than just being silent. We can draw near to the throne of grace in prayer. After all, we have a great high priest, Jesus, the Son of God, who has come through the worst suffering, the greatest trauma, who's come out on the other side of sin, death, and hell victorious. He alone is powerful enough, is strong enough, to overcome what we're going through even now. So my encouragement to you is this, whether it's today, 
or a different day in the future, whether you're invited to take a moment of silence somewhere in public or whether it's in your home, do that. Be quiet for a few moments, but don't think nothing. Don't say nothing. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. That you are a child of the Most High God. That you have a great High Priest Jesus who invites you into his presence and who more than silence wants to hear from you. It draws back to mind language from the Lord's Prayer. We pray, Our Father who art in heaven. Martin Luther writes in the small catechism that we are to approach God as his dear children approach their dear father. Those of you that are parents understand the desire, the want for your children to come to you with things big and small to share their life, to share their day with you. Do the same with God today. Find a moment, quiet your soul, but then present your requests to the one person who is truly able to do something about them, and then sit back, because we're promised that when we do, when we approach the throne of grace with confidence, that we receive mercy and we find grace to help in the time of need. God's blessing is to you today as you approach God's throne of grace and mercy with confidence. <laughs>